savior. I mean, what a savior we have. And sometimes, you know, the last time I was here, I, I wasn't feeling the, at my best, but today there was a fire inside my belly. You know, over the week as I was preparing and thinking, what am I going to say? And I was looking up remembering. Remembering the place I used to be, the dark, desperate place I used to be before Jesus rescued me from the pits of hell. Today there's a fire in my belly because I'm, I'm not just remembering what this day is about, but I'm remembering how he touched my, how he touched my life and the things that he has given me. Now, not every memory has been good and not every memory has been bad. There's been mixes between good and bad and in-betweens. But God, but God, some days those are the only two words I get up and I can say, but God, no situations and stuff happens, but God, you know, I have to remember his faithfulness and his goodness in my life. And when life is all bad and, and, and horrible and mental health is, is crippling me, but God, you know, there's been so many fearful times that God has broke through in my life and, you know, if I don't step step back and remember them, I can almost take them for granted or miss them. Or almost undo. You know, you can't really undo what God, God has done, but in your own life you almost can. Because you allow stuff to consume you and overwhelm you. And that's okay. But we take a step back and say, but God. If God has done it then, God will do it again. Amen. Maybe that's what somebody needs to hear today. If God done it then, he will do it again. I didn't expect to say that little line, but there we go. On the bus the other day, I was thinking, you know, I knew the message was going to be about remembering, but what type of remembering? And I was thinking, there's so many types of remembering. I was thinking, remembering the past. Remembering the law of God. Remembering to obey your parents in the Lord. Remembering your former ways before you were saved. Remembering day-to-day -day stuff. You know, looking after the children, getting up and going to work, paying the bills, cleaning the house. Remembering the good memories and the bad memories. Childhood traumas and child, ch childhood pains. And then remembering good things. And we all have memories. But then I was trying to think, what would life be like if I couldn't remember? And it, and it really struck me. And it really hit me. And I thought, wow. And sometimes it happens in life where people get to a point or a sickness or something happens and people can't remember. And for a moment I tried to put myself there. Not fully because I couldn't. But the fear and the anxiety that I thought to come over me, I think, wow. You know, when you can't remember the person's name sitting in front of you, you know, how terrible that must be for the both parties. And I'm thinking, wow, remembering is such a gift of God. And how he allows us the ability to remember. In, in, in our body, in our mind, the sensations, you know, when you go to a nightclub and you hear loud music, it's not just the loud music, you hear, you feel the, the, the bass going through your body and the, the tingling, and you think, wow, I want to do that again. Why? Because you remember that it was a good experience. When a baby is um, having its little, what's it, the stimulation, the little lights, and the little sounds, and the rattlies, or the little noisy toys that make the same repetitive noise time and time again. Like, oh my goodness, can you please take the batteries out of that? But the baby loves it, because it's been stimulated. It remembers, and it wants it again. Our brain is hardwired to remember past events, so that the reward system in that part of our brain will do, do stuff like that again. It makes you feel safe makes you feel protected, but it also allows you to experience the fullness of life that God has given to you. We're going to look at a few different passages about remembering. Past, the law of God, remembering your former ways that you were once in darkness, but now you're a child of God, 
and you've been brought into the light. But before that, we'll pray. Father, we give you thanks for what this day represents. And many countries around the world will be remembering the 11th day, the 11th hour, the 11th month. When such fighting and pain and stuff ended. But Lord, even though that day might have ended a war, the pain and the trauma still lived on in many people's families and many people's hearts. And maybe even to this day where people still hold resentment or anger or whatever toward individuals or toward companies and people. But Lord, we, we ask that your grace would be sufficient, that your love, God, would, would enter and break into our hearts as we remember, God, you and your love toward us and for us. And thank you, Father, that we have this community of, of people in this church who love us so deeply and who want the best for each other. Thank you, Lord, for its very foundation in the past and for what has been built up here, Lord, we pray that, you know, in the future that you will continue to add people to this, to continue this church on and its legacy and what it's led over the years. Thank you, Father, for those who have been fully committed over the years. So we remember them also, God, and their faithfulness toward you and your goodness. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. My first Bible verse is Psalm 77 and 11. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonderful, the wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work, the talk and of your dreams. <coughs> your ways, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great, O God, as our God? Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed the people, the sons of Jacob, Joseph, and Selai. The waters saw thee, O God, the waters saw thee. They were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out the waters. The sky sent out a second and the sound, and thy arrows also went abroad. I'm not read Old King James as about. <laughs> or to me, this is nearly Jewish, Old King James. <laughs> but I will remember the works of the Lord. You know, each and every day we have an opportunity to remember the works of God. Not just the works, but his wonders. And, you know, as we, read that, I, I, as we read the Old Testament, or as I read the Old Testament, I'm always amazed at God's wonders and the things that he done. You know, for the people in Exodus, for Daniel, I love the book of Daniel at the moment. And as I look at, at, at Daniel's heart toward God and, you know, the innocence of him and his friends and how God provided and how God was so faithful, to them. And I believe how God was to Daniel, God can still be to us. We might not get put into a big fiery furnace, but sometimes our circumstances, our life, feels like a fiery furnace. Stress, anxiety, fear can feel like being in a big fiery furnace. You know, when the weight of stuff is on top of you and the world is piling in and you feel like you're almost claustrophobic, and the world is closing in and you feel closed in. I want to say that God is in that moment with you. And as he was then, he can be with you. As, as he was walking in the fiery furnace, as he was walking in the fiery furnace with Daniel, he is walking in the fiery furnace with us. But I like that it says here that the waters remembered and I was listening to a sermon um, by one of the people who helped me and Sarah in my time of addiction called Phil Hills and he talked about when Jesus was coming into Jericho on, on Palm Sunday that if you don't worship me even the stones will cry out 
But the stones weren't created to cry out. We were created to cry out. We were created to remember the wonderful works and deeds of God, not the stones. But he said that if you don't, they will. And I was lo loving the fact that he went through these different times in the Bible where stones were used to record. Stones were used to remember and to remind us of God's goodness. When the Ten Commandments were wrote on, you know, up in the mountain, they were used as a way of helping us remember God's word for us. God uses the stones to help us remember. <laughs> so, I remember my first time when I got my job at Carpenter's Arms, I took, um, took the guys out a walk. We went to Beacon Hill. And as an exercise, I got them to all pick one stone, and then they were to bring the stone to me on our next day's devotion. And I was using a bit of faith here. They were to give me the stone, and I was to write what I thought God was saying about them, or something for them. Now, in these kind of moments, there's a little bit, you have to be really trusting God, because if you get it wrong, they will let you know you get it wrong, and they might throw the stones at you. <laughs> but, there was something powerful that happened there. Some of the stones had one word, some of the stones had a little sentence. And as I give them the stone, and I prayed for them, and as God was revealing his, himself to them, as God was revealing his character to them, something of his love, they remembered where they were before they come onto the program. And those words were almost a word, uh, something that I didn't know that happened to them in the past, was for, for some of them. Some of them was just a, a, a word of hope or encouragement. And there's something beautiful that when you have something wrote for one of these guys who are so broken, in, even for us, and God's revealing something of, of himself to them, it was almost a little moment where God was reminding them, I was in the trouble with you. I was in the mess with you. I saw every single bit of pain. I saw every single tear run down your face. I saw every beer can on the side of your bed and every bag of stuff. And let me say, wherever you are today in your life, the tears that you have cried, the pain that you have been through, the anxiety and the depression that you feel, God is going through it with you. He is in that with you. God's wonderful deeds have not left you. God's wonders have not left you. God's purpose and God's plan for your life has not left you. God's hopes and dreams and desires for you are still within you. But when life has its own way, it can almost feel that this is not true for me. I can almost feel that, you know, God has abandoned me or God has forsaken me. Let me tell you, that is a lie from the pits of hell. God has not left or forsaken any person in this room. Now, your mind might tell you that, and your mind might feel like that, but it's not true. But God. Sometimes we have to come back to our word, the, the Bible. Sometimes we have to just get a simple story like Daniel 6 or Daniel chapter 1. Not very long chapters. Very easy to read. And we see God do an absolute miracle in the, in the heart of a king, in the heart of four men. Now, we, may not, we might not be the wisest of people, might not be the most intelligent of people, or maybe you are. But the same God that was with them is the same God that is, with us, that is with us. That's why he says the God of Jacob, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac is to remember them. And it's the same God, the God of our ancestors. It's the same God that was doing the work then. It's the same God that's doing the work now. But there's a question. Do you believe that? Do you truly believe that? And sometimes I don't. I just feel the power of God surging through me. You know, sometimes when I'm going through a bad moment, it's hard to remember. It's hard to think that God is in this with me. It's, it's hard to think that God is going to give me a breakthrough because I'm so consumed with the, the moment. And I had that kind of moment last week where I was like, full of anxiety, full of pain, full of fear, missing, couldn't understand where it was coming from. And, you know, 
for a little bit of time, I thought, you know, I, I didn't want to get out of this. I almost could have kept myself in it. And I and talked it through with Sarah. And Sarah helped me. And that's why God gives us wives to help us through stuff. Or husbands to help the wives through stuff. But if we haven't got that, then we have to re truly rely on God or our friends or other people. But God. My next psalm is Psalm 8. This Bible, everything's the wrong way around because it's Jewish. <laughs> it's hard to. Psalm 8 and chapter, or verses 4. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visited him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast covered him with the glory and honour. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of your hands. Thou have put all things under his feet. What is man that God is mindful of us? Just dust of the earth. But we're not just dust of the earth. Because he breathed his life into us. The breath of life. You know, when he made Adam, he breathed his life, he breathed his spirit inside of him. And evolution might say you're just, you know, an evolvement of some ape or something to discredit and to take away from God's glory, to take away from what he truly made us. And when we just evolve from an ape, well, then we have no real identity. God breathed his very life inside of us after he made us. More than that, we're fearfully and wonderfully made inside our mother's womb. And if God made us, then that means our identity is found in him and our human nature comes from him. We're born in his image and his likeness and we carry the DNA of God. We have gifts and abilities that are given to us by God. What is man that you are mindful of him? He watches over us night and day. But you might not believe that. You might not feel that. Let me tell you. He watches over us night and day and he is mindful of every single thing. Sometimes he is waiting on the cry of your heart. He says, those who draw close to me, I will draw close to them. I'm going to ask, are you drawn close to him so that he has the opportunity to draw close to you? Or is your heart sometimes hardened where you want to push him away? Because let me tell you, if you want to push God away, he'll allow you to. He invites you to come to the table to lay all that you are before his feet. And he wants that intimate relationship. He wants that closeness with you. He wants you to initiate that closeness with him. And that's a beautiful friend. A beautiful saviour. A beautiful king. Someone who adores you. Someone who cherishes you. And this is what Sunday is about, you know. It's about remembering. It's about remembering Jesus. He is the Sabbath. You know, I remember I grew up in Northern Ireland where it was like all the legalistic kind of stuff where you no know, parks could be open on a Sunday, you no know, shops be open on a Sunday. You know, nothing done on a Sunday. Not even cook your dinner or lunch on a Sunday. Make your way at 12 o'clock before midnight and hopefully it will stay warm for 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I bet that never happened. <laughs> but I get the Sabbath day and keep it holy, but Christ is the Sabbath day. And when he died on the cross, we get to remember that day every single day. And Sunday is a day where we come and celebrate that. 
and remind ourselves of the victory that Christ won for our behalf. And that's why I thought at that moment where there was a moment there where God was doing something. And sometimes, uh, I, I, and, and I'll be honest, that sometimes we can just rush on to the next thing. Let's get this bit over with and let's get the next bit and let's get a cup of tea and coffee and let's get home. And everything can happen far too fast. And people have had fast, busy weeks. And then they leave here and they go back to their fast, busy weeks. You know, what I don't like about Western culture is, you know, do the next thing, get the next thing done, and let's keep going and burn ourselves out. Sometimes, you know, you're allowed, and, and, and I know you know this, but you're allowed a day off. You're allowed to take a step back. You're allowed a time to relax. And if you can't do that, I pray that somebody will come into your life to help you be able to do that. Where you find a hobby and an interest or something where you just get to switch off for a moment of time and, and be yourself. Be what God has created you to be. You know, we're not created just to be busybodies all the time. There are moments where we can have joy and have fun and experience. Going back to my very first point, there's things that God has given us to enjoy and to like. They help us enjoy this experience on life. And then there's times for seriousness and there's times for work and, and there's times for all the other things. Oh, I'm going to go a little bit lighter for a second. Um, so, this morning, if, if when, I, when I woke up, I was trying to think of different types of memory. And there's eight, eight big types of memory, but I, I'm not going to go through them all because it would take too long. But the ones that I thought were very interesting, the first one is working memory. It's a type of short-term memory that stores information temporarily. This happens when you're doing cognitive tasks or do, doing things that make your brain, you know, think, such as problem solving. But as you continue to do the problem solving, your brain stores it into long-term memory and your body remembers. So like, almost like for me, driving is a problem solving. <laughs> The first few times doing my lessons, I'm like trying to get in a gear, trying to remember, do this here, look in a, the little thing here, mirror, look in this mirror, look in that mirror, too many mirrors. And I think, man, there's too much going on here. My brain cannot cope. But the last few days, we've got some insurance on, on the car where I can drive with Sarah and the girls in the back. And I've learned more in that, t in that time because somebody's not saying, do this, do that, do that. So I'm just getting to think for myself. But the things that I have been taught from my instructor is actually amazing that it's actually there. So it's amazing that God has given us the ability to remember things in the short term that then carry on to the long term. It's a gift from God, an absolute gift from God. Then we have sensory memory. So sensory memory allows you to remember sensory information. The stimulation has ended or it's begun. Remembering the sensation, remembering the sensation of a person's touch and the sound. You know, when a child is born and you hold it for the very first time, something happens in that child. That sensory moment in the skin to skin, you know, reaction, something happens in that moment. It's almost a miracle. And the child knows, wow, this is my mum. Or this is my dad with his big hairy chest. But, you know, a bond begins to take place in that moment. Or, you know, you get a hug from a friend. You know, and something that men maybe don't do a lot is, is hug. Or they do, or they get the fist pump. And you enjoy it, and it brings respect. Or it makes you feel welcome. You know, it brings you into a, a, a space. Or even sometimes with the sensory, with the lights in here, you know, dim them, make a bit of an atmosphere. 
or the sound of the music and it brings people into a place of worship or childhood TV programs. That's an annoying one. They are a bit too stimulating, I think, and too sensory. My head is going... <laughs> and uh, you don't want any more TV after the TV is on sale by the WhatsApp group. <laughs> you get episodic, episodic memory. Episodic memory is the ability to remember past experiences and events. And this type of memory has three subtypes, so long, short, and medium term memory it's built up from. And then somatic memory, this is this is the body of knowledge stored in our brains that helps us underst understand knowledge and describe the world. But going through all these different types, the brain is so complex. But it's amazing that how God put this thing in, inside when you take it out, it doesn't look like very much. But it's such an important part of the human body and God's intelligence and God's design in it and God's ability to to put things in, in there that you don't even have to think about memory wise your body just remembers it automatically and it does things you know to heal and repair your organs to heal and repair you know, the blood the red blood cells the white blood cells your skin we don't have to tell our, our, our body to do that the brain just knows and remembers do this at this time do that at that time and boom what an amazing creation that God has given us. And I think if there's anything that's so, so important to say is, is that we have to look after this here. At all costs. As much as possible. And I think the few ways that we can do it is first, remembering God. Remembering His faithfulness. Remembering His goodness toward us. Remembering His love and affection for us. Remembering that we are the apple of his eye. Remembering that he has called us from a place of hopelessness to a place of hope. From a place of despair to a place of repair. A place of death to a place of life. And that's the first step. That's what I have to do. And it gives me a little bit of joy. But then I get into his word and I say, God, what, what have you got in here today that's going to feed my soul, that's going to feed my mind, that's going to feed my heart, then it's going to feed my family, it's going to feed my friends, it's going to go into my workplace. And he gives me something. And it helps my mind. And it helps me go to work in a good, in a good mindset. And I'm fired up and ready to help, help the guys at work. And then I have to come home from work, so I have to remind myself of what I have at home. I've got beautiful girls, a beautiful wife, a roof over my head, food, a car, all of the stuff. And you know, if I don't do that, I can almost take for granted because if I leave there in, in whatever mindset I leave, I could go home and just bring that all there. And sometimes that has happened. but. You know, more now than ever, I try to get myself out of that place because I remember what I, I did not have. And when I think in 2015, when I came to England, a broken mess, a drug addict, kicked out of home, you know, no friends, no money, no real perspective in, in life, working in an abattoir, cutting intestines off pigs, woohoo. But if I don't remind myself when I'm coming out of the doors of my work to what I have, I can take that for granted. And I have to learn to cherish what I have. I remember, thank you, Jesus, for what you have given me. And it's the same for each of us. Thank you, Jesus, for what he has given us. Your life and your experiences are your life and your experiences and your family. But each of us have so much to be grateful to God for. But sometimes you just have to remind ourselves of that. But if we allow ourselves to become consumed by past experiences and, and what we're experiencing now, we can almost miss what we have. And one day, what we have now won't be here. But God. In 
and to finish. Today, known as Poppy Day, owing to tradition of wearing remembrance poppies and a memorial day observed in the Commonwealth member state since the end of the First World War to honour the armed forces, the members who have died in the line of duty. The day is marked by war remembrance in several other non-Commonwealth uh, countries. In most countries, remembrance day is observed on the 11th of November to recall the end of the First World War hostilities. So we were a poppy on Remembrance Day, but as Christians, now the Bible says that God will give you a new heart. A heart of flesh. The Bible says that God will write on the tablet of your heart His law. The Bible says that God will give you a Holy Spirit that lives and dwells inside you. The Bible says that God has marked you with a seal until the day of redemption. The Bible says that you are holy and blameless in His sight. The Bible says that you are called and you are chosen. The Bible says that you are a child of the living God, a new creation. The Bible says that you have been given a new identity. The Bible says that you are a new creation, created in the image of Christ, being transformed from glory to glory. That's what we wear inside of our heart every single day. Now we wear a poppy once a year. As Christians, we wear the heart of God every single day. What an honour and what a privilege that is. As we remember our Saviour, our King, the Lord of Lords, the Maker of the heavens and the earth, the Maker of all things, who has called you and has allowed you this opportunity and who has given you the privilege to be uh, uh, adopted as His own. Let us remember what He has done for us, even when it feels too difficult and too hard to. Maybe by remembering what He has done. Maybe by remembering what He has given us. Maybe by remembering where you once were before you were saved. It might be enough to lift you up and pull you out of the, the mindset or the memories or the past pains and traumas that you're feeling and experiencing at any given time. Father, we give you thanks for every person in here. Every memory, every heartache, every pain, every tear. Every, every single bit of brokenness, every good memory, every child that has been born, every bit of influence, every bit of inspiration that they have received, every bit of wisdom and knowledge that have been handed to every person in here over the years. We thank you for it, God. And when we feel hopeless and, and down and out, Lord, help us remind ourselves of what we have. Help us build ourselves up in our most holy faith. Help us fan into flame the gift of God that has been given to us. And if anybody has lost their joy of being a Christian, I pray, Lord, that you would reunite that. Fan into flame, God, what you have given them. In the name of Jesus. Amen.